Hoos are still in business. Again, this ACC men's thing, we've seen it. One, two, three teams, three top teams in the country in this league. And it's May, which means it's go time. So with that said, Coach Tiffany, how are we doing? We are doing great. Just got off the practice field. Uh, excited being a plane tomorrow, heading to Albany, taking on a big time talented Georgetown Hoya team. Nothing better than May lacrosse. All right, uh, before we get a deep dive on that one, uh, I, I couldn't help but laugh. I went back and I watched your post-press uh, conference after uh, the win. And you talk about a kid in a candy store. <laughs> Raining, sleet, <laughs> hail, locusts. I mean, goodness gracious, it was coming down sideways. And you were out there like, man, there's nothing that were running around in puddles. And, man, you, you yeah. couldn't hold, get your footing. But, man, we're, we're like, where else would you rather be? I mean, the weather was just goofy and crazy and had to shut it down there for about a half an hour and all that stuff. But it just looked like your guys were having a blast playing the sport that they love. I, I appreciate you noticing that, Mark. It, it, it really was a biblical-type deluge, you know, what, hap- what dropped on us for 15 minutes uh-huh. here in Charlottesville. And don't tell the recruits because we it's it's always sunny and seventy here. But um, we yeah, it was just like let's embrace this. This is fun. This is, feels I told you guys it feels like middle school. You know when you're not playing on the best fields and you're just out there for the love of the game and you're playing with your buddies and you're getting muddy and dirty and you know someone's gonna have to do that cleanup afterwards. You're not sure if it's you or your mom and it's just it was just just getting after it in in, in the muck and and what this game really devised originated from you know the native american roots you didn't have artificial surfaces or indoor facilities <laughs> you got after it in the elements no matter what mother nature throws at you you guys really took it to Richmond, and it was a dominating, impressive performance from you guys. Coach, what you, when you watch it back or you're watching in real time, too, what stood out to you about your team? Such a heightened moment, postseason play. Uh, they, they did really well. Yeah, well, we shot the ball really well, which shocked me because, again, our sticks are soaked. And, uh, and they tend to get a little deeper when it's that wet. But we shot 50% or just over that, which – you know, I was when I saw the post game stats, I'm like, well, it took 33 shots, and yet we still got 17 goals. So we were focused, we were sharp despite the conditions. That was really, uh, that was that was one of the big positives. And then the energy and the excitement. You know, so one of the reporters after the game asked me, you know, boy, you had that 30 minute delay with the lightning, and, you know, how'd you guys deal with it? And I was like, it was just 30 minutes. So it's no big deal. You, know, we, we, you don't make a mountain out of a, you know, out of a molehill. It's not a big deal. You know, we sat in the locker room, talked about it, made a few adjustments, came out and played. You know, it's just, I, I'm really fortunate to have a season group. Grayson Soliday leading the way. Schellenberger, Castor, and Sostad are the other three captains. It, it, it's like I've got 30-year-olds and not 20-year-olds uh, for the majority of my locker room. These guys understand the pressure, understand the moment, put it aside, and go out and compete. Coach, uh, the one thing I have learned uh, hosting this show, whether it be Packer and Durham or this show, is number one, lacrosse, because it, it's a sport that has taken over, it, and the league is great at it, both the men and the women's side. Mm-hmm. But it, it, even a deeper dive, and I'm not an expert, but I, I learn a lot every time we have coaches or players on, regardless of the gender. But you introduced me to this LaSalle kid, and you talked to me about, man, the importance of controlling the ball. And good grief, every time I watch you guys play, it's like, man, if that kid is still at school and he is still at Virginia. He's been there. And he's like Ricky Stokes. I always get around about Ricky Stokes that was at Virginia for 15 years playing hoops. But right. th- the importance of being able to control the draw, it really is incredible, isn't it? I mean, I'm, and again, I'm speaking as a layman here. I'm not an expert. But watching him work is really an art form, isn't it? It really is. And, and to step back, you know, when you think about the sport of lacrosse, it's unique in the idea that you can score and get, take the possession of the ball once again very quickly. It's a make it, take it. You know, when you're playing pick up 3v3 basketball, make it, take it. But, you know, when you're in the normal realm of basketball, the other team gets the ball. Football, you kick off the other team unless you want to take the risk of an onside kick. Yes, in hockey and soccer, you know, possession, which is much more fluid and difficult to really control the puck or the ball, it doesn't matter as much. But in a game where you can protect the ball in, in your stick, in the cross, it's it's really unique among sports where you can score and get the ball right back and get the ball right back. And so uh, it's such a priority on the faceoff specialist, and that's what PD LaSalle has done for us for now five years, which you're right. My, my competitors probably think it's been 10 years because he's been doing it well right from the get-go, from 2019 
uh, on through. So PD is an absolute warrior. He just broke the record for most faceoffs ever taken in Division One lacrosse. I'm a little embarrassed by that. I don't want to be known as the manager who kept throwing the same pitcher <laughs> over and over and over and outused that arm. But PD's he, he would have it no different. He wants everyone. He wants to be out there. He doesn't seem to let injuries slow him down. And um, what a warrior. What an absolute warrior. And, and a really good offensive lacrosse player. I mean, he has over 30 goals as a faceoff guy. He can use his other hand. Most players can only have one hand. He's a faceoff specialist who can put the stick in his left hand. We throw him passes. You don't throw passes to faceoff guys. You're like, get rid of the ball and get out of the game. Not Petey. What a weapon. He's such an asset. Hey, coach, when you have an ace, you got to throw your ace. That's just the way this works, and that's certainly <laughs> PD when it, when it comes to you. What about Xander Dixon? Because his story is incredible, and he just set a, a record this game with his 58th goal, which is the most in a single season in UVA history, which is incredible, and he's a fifth-year guy. He's been there a long time as well. Uh, speak to his story and what he's meant to this team and this offensive attack this year, which has been, like you mentioned in this last game especially, so good. Yeah, his story is what you're trying to define when the Virginia lacrosse program gets that elite status, where you see the Alabama and Georgias of the footballs, where they've got such incredible depth. I mean, Xander couldn't get on the field his first couple of years, you know, more than a few minutes here and there, because he's stuck behind Matt Moore and Ian Laviano and Michael Krause. And yet we knew we had somebody very talented. And, um, and so you, 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 he continued to persevere he did jump in the transfer portal he looked but we have a different way of doing things here we're okay with that hey you want to jump in the transfer portal see uh you want to kick some tires somewhere else see uh see what the other offers out there but i think you're going to come back and we want you to come back and but he was just desperate for playing time he knew how good he was we knew how good he was it was just it's tough to get on the field at alabama and georgia until you're a little older and have more experience you know and and that's what's happened here you know and now it's his time the other part of it, we, we've played him in midfield, and, and he helped us there, but he's really good on attack. Putting your best shooters, your smartest players, really close to the other team's goal. It's pretty simple math. We should have probably done this last year. But he's, uh, he, he's been playing exceptionally well. And, I mean, his shooting percentage is, is almost unheard of. Being over 50%, um, that, 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 that's, that's almost unique. Coach, uh, handicap Georgetown. And while we sit there and put our feet up and watch all these great matches and showdowns yeah. this weekend on both the men's and women's side, what can we expect when you guys see Georgetown? You're talking about athletes. I will, I will uh, you know, cautiously say this, you know, without doing, too, sounding too brash. When we step on the field, um, we tend to have the superior athletes, a little bit faster and bigger. Not when we play against Duke. You know, that's pretty balanced. And not when we play Notre Dame. But for the most part, you know, it's it's we've got an edge there. We don't win the Georgetown. You know, they actually had more men drafted in the most recent outdoor draft uh, for the PLL than we did. Um, this is a team that's got exceptional transfers and some homegrown products that have developed within their program. Coach Kevin Warren's done a really nice job at the portal. A couple of really nice players from North Carolina. Uh, exceptional player, Tucker Dordovich from Syracuse. Brian Minikis from Colgate. Uh, a couple of others. So this is a team that's got dudes. They've got ball players, and so when you step into that onto that field on Saturday, um, you better be an elite athlete because the other team's got elite athletes. This this is uh, these are two big bulls charging hard and fast at each other, about to smash into each other. I know when you came on the show, you said you just came off the practice field. You guys have practice, and then you're going to leave for Albany here tomorrow. So what have you been focusing on with your team as you head into this Georgetown game, knowing the fight that it's going to be? Sure. You know, first of all, we, we try to keep it the same as we always do. We take Mondays off. I uh, had a big Tuesday, you know, yesterday. Today was a bit more of a walkthrough. Going through the schemes. The, uh, you know, Georgetown's clearing at 92%. That's got to be number one in the country. That, that's exceptional. But we love to ride. We love to 10-man. We like to put the pressure and, and extend out and force you to be in uncomfortable situations while, get, while exposing our own goal. Well, the goal's unprotected. You know, so it's sort of a challenge of how do we ride a team that's the best clearing team in the country. So we've been working on that. You know, their man-up unit was number one in the country. Maybe, maybe still is. It was last week. Um, you know, so they got just about the best extra man unit in the nation trying to defend that. You know, so looking at our schemes – how do we slow down uh, what's an exceptional program without making too many big changes? How do we tinker a little bit so it's still understandable to us and our men, but 
you know, without confusing us, but yet is effective and can throw, you know, a curveball here or there. So it's been scheming. And that's what's fun having a seasoned veteran group. We can make little changes and little adjustments without having to practice it for two or three days. It's more like two or three reps and like, okay, got it. Got it. All right. And then we can move forward. All I know, coach, you got a Ferrari. You don't drive it in third gear, coach. You don't <laughs> drive it in third gear when you got a Ferrari. You, you got to treat it like Taylor Tannenbaum does when the show ends at seven o'clock. She Mario and Dreddy's it right down my driveway going 35 miles an hour. She just <laughs> it, it, hell bent. Here we go. I have a lead foot, coach. Off she goes. I have a lead foot. I do. <laughs> Hope you have well, a good lawyer. Get you out of those tickets. Uh, exactly. Can, well, there's some truth in that. 